All right, so out of the blue, uh, I got an email asking straight out if I wanted to interview Zach Wild. Yes, thank you. I'll do an interview with Zach Wild, please. So the next day, I basically had an interview with Zach Wild, a 20 minute interview, so not that long, unfortunately. But at least we got a chance to talk a little bit about Pantera and the upcoming stuff and, and shit like that. I mean, there was so much that I wanted to ask him, but with the short amount of time, he's on a, he's on a, like a press schedule. Uh, or a press marathon, uh, you know, I just couldn't ask him everything that I wanted. But I got a short little amount of time. Maybe you will find it interesting. Check it out. What is shaking? <laughs> What's up, buddy? What are you doing, brother? Oh, I'm about to have an interview right now. What's up? You all walking? Very good, very good. Uh, what, what are you up to now? Are you home or are you on tour? Oh, uh, getting ready to go out and do the Kiss Cruise. Damn, you're so busy, yeah. man. How how do you <laughs> how do you even cope? First of all, I want to say I really appreciate that you take the time to talk to me for a, a short bit. Uh, I've been sitting here today uh, learning my uh, favorite Black Label Society song, "Suicide Messiah," <laughs> in your new uh, Berserker guitar camp, and oh, very uh, good. Uh, at the Riff Hard thing there. Uh, tell me a little bit about this uh, collaboration between you and Riff Hard. Um, no, uh, Blasco. Uh, he he was just like, hey, Zach, uh, I got my, uh, I got a bunch of my buddies uh, that work over at the Riff Hard thing, Ale and stuff like that. He goes, the guys were talking about doing maybe like a guitar course thing. And I was like, yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm always posting vids on social media, whether I'm playing, so you know, whatever solos I'm playing. Right. But, uh, but uh, you know, I never, I, you know, people always ask me, like, Zach, you, can you break down the solo to... I mean, anything, whether it's No More Tears or Mama or, or I mean, anything, Suicide Messiah or whatever. Yeah. But it's just like, I mean, obviously, I don't have the time. It's not that I, well, you know, obviously, there, there is more important things to do, like making sure my fishnets match my of stilettos course. and my yes. rouge matches my, you know, my lip gloss <laughs> and my, and my eye shadow for the big rock shows. <laughs> but, uh no, I, I, I was just like, yeah, this is a great way where I could knock it all out in one shot. I'm just, I mean, because learning it is one thing. Learn when somebody shows you, well, you know, if you're playing, showing me a card trick, yeah, and I'm like, man, how'd you end up doing that? You know, and then you go, Zach, this is how you do it. You know, and I go, oh, okay. You know, I mean, so you, you break it down, so it just seems playing it is one thing, but actually understanding it. Is a is a whole other thing. My my guitar teacher Leroy Wright was great at that. So, you know, when he would teach me whether whether I was playing like uh, like the when I learned how to play Back in Black, like that was right. a big breakthrough for me because I could play da 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 the lick there. Mm -hmm. But aside of learning the lick, he showed me like Zach this this scale here. See up here on the octave. This is this is the the E minor pentatonic scale. And then, you know, and then you find out from that lick mm. where all the scales that connect to it going up the complete fretboard. Right. So it's not that you just learn a lick and you go, wow, I know how to play that. It's like, you know how that works mm -hmm. or why it works. Right. It's like, I have no idea. You know, I, I know how to play the lick, but I, I have no understanding of what I'm doing. No. You know what I mean? So I think with all guitar players... You know, it depends on your guitar playing. I mean, whatever you want to do. If you want to be advanced or whatever, you know, I mean, like, if I wanted to show, you know, if, if Kurt Cobain was like, Zach, can you show me how to play a couple bar chords? I just want to learn how to play some Beatles songs, some Sabbath right. things, and some, you know, I just want to write my song and then play some punk stuff. You know, it's like, here, let me let me show you some John McLaughlin Mahavishnu stuff or some, you know, Aldemiola you know, from the land of the midnight sun stuff or whatever, your know, eruption or what, you know, the, the, the tapping bit, he would be like, it's like, I don't, I don't really need to learn a lot. That serves me no purpose, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, I want to play punk rock songs, bro. Yeah. So it, it depends on your, your playing, what you want to learn, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong and there's nothing right. Yep. You know what I mean? Even down to like holding the guitar pick, the way Steve Morris holds a guitar pick or Eddie Van Halen holds a guitar pick. Compared to the way Randy Rhodes holds it or Brian May. Yeah. You know was, what I mean? Uh, or Jimmy Page. I mean, Brian May uses a quarter. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. And it was incredibly uh, interesting to see because it was like you're getting really up close in the series, right? I can see like they're filming your picking hand and all that. And it, it just, uh, you know, it just dawned on me because I, I caught, uh, I've seen you a bunch of times with Black Label and, you know, I went to see Zach Sabbath at uh, Dimebash 
uh, like two or uh, three, four years ago. And oh, yeah, down in, what was it in uh, Texas? Yeah. Yes, exactly. And uh, I, I, it just occurred to me like so, there were so many times during that set I was like, where the hell did Seth go? And then you eventually popped up somewhere in the middle of the audience, and you were doing like <laughs> alternate picking for like ten minutes straight, and. It was like, holy shit, it was so articulate. And now when I saw it in the uh, Riff Hard series, where it's like up, really up close on your picking hand, uh, I, I, it's like the movement you do is so big on the hand for some reason, for the right hand, but it's so articulate. And uh, it's, it's really something. It really uh, popped open my eyes because, you know, for me personally, it's all about, you know, the, min the, the very small uh, effort to make a note ring, and you know, you're taught of being, to be able to play faster, you have to be, you know, a little slower and a little more precise and, you know, s small movements, but you're really moving that hand. Like you said, I mean, it's just, I think that's just like, we were going back to like how it's whatever's comfortable for you, because let's be real, the less movement, the better, the better off you're going to be. I mean, when you look at Michelangelo, or you look at Inge, mm. I mean, you, and they're both blisteringly, Faster, Chris and Pelletieri, uh, yeah. you know, or uh, Rusty, you know, Absolutely. Rusty Cooley. I mean, all of them play at an insane speed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just like it's it's complete nitrous speed. But I mean, but it's very little movement with all the guys, and it just makes sense. I mean, the the, the less movement with your picking hand, yeah. it, you know, you, you want to have as as little movement as possible. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's just uh, but no, for me, it's just. I, I'm comfortable doing that, but it, without a doubt, I we both agree on it. I think mean, it's just like I'm I'm completely aware of the less movement, the better. Especially yeah. if you're going to be playing fast, yeah, for sure. I'm a big Pantera fan, and this whole thing that's happened now with uh, you know the Pantera tribute thing, and now you're uh, you're a part of it. Obviously, extremely exciting, and you know you're the absolute right guy for this. I mean, seeing you know your connection with Dimebag and all of that. What what was the uh, the initial reaction when they asked you about joining the Pantera tribute? Because it's it wasn't the first time, right? They did ask you sort of. When yeah, was I, well, I mean, there, there's always been like talks about it. Yeah, you know, for years. You know what I mean? Especially when Vin Vinny was still alive. Mm. So, you know, and it was just like, well, I'll just wait till that day comes, you know what I mean? Like, if you guys decide you want to do it, you know I'm always going to be here for you. Yes. I mean, of course, it'd be like Mitch and, you know, Noel Redding, you know, Mitch Mitchell and Noel Redding, mm -hmm. and asking Eric Clapton if they Eric would sing and play Jimmy's stuff and honor him if, if they were going to go out and do a tribute to Jimmy. Yeah. I mean, of course Eric is going to do it, you yeah. know what I mean? And that, that, there isn't even a question about it. Eric would be, of course, I would be honored to honor my buddy mm -hmm. that I love. So, I mean, that's, that's the way I've always viewed it. So, um, yeah, it, it, for me, it was just like, well, when you guys call me and you guys decide you ever want to do this, I mean, obviously, I'll be here and I'll support you guys. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Phil called me up and then uh, one night and he was just like, Zach, yeah, we were think you know, I was talking with Rex, we're thinking about doing this and, you know, we're wondering if you'd be, if you would want to honor Dime. And I was like, well, of course, man, you know, I've, you know. <laughs> how, how am I going to say no? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like saying no to the dime bash. You know what I mean? Right. right. Like, why? What do you mean, no, you're not going to do it? I mean, you know, it's just like, of course I'm going to do it. So, I mean, you know, so now it's just, all right, well, send me the songs and the set list so I can start, so I can start learning this stuff, man, you know? Have you started? So, uh, yeah, of course. I've been working on it for a while now. You know, I had to get a whammy pedal. I never owned one of those things. So. Are, are you, are you going to use a Floyd Rose? Brady will probably be running the thing, you know, like how we ran it for dime bag. So, yeah, I'm a proud owner of a whammy pedal now. So, uh. <laughs> Are you, are you going to use a Floyd Rose on the guitars? Well, yeah, and I've got my dime guitars. Right, so, yeah. right. So are you going to use your dime guitars for this? Uh, your personal ones? Yeah, the or? ones that actually he gave me. Yeah, exactly. That makes it even cooler, actually. So I mean, put it this way: if we were, if it was a, a surprise birthday party for Dime and Vinny, and they were like, "What'd you get us?" and it's like, Charlie and Zach are going to sit in for you guys, so yeah. <laughs> you could watch your, you could actually watch somebody play your stuff. Yeah, like they'd be, they'd be crying, laughing, bro. Yeah. I mean, like they'd probably go, "This is probably the coolest birthday present we could ever have." Yes, watching two of our jackass friends playing our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But also, you know, the, uh, apparently, uh, you're go also going to use his rigs, right? 
like his his stuff, or are you going to like? Is it going to be a combination? Yeah, I mean, of I, this? I got my rig and everything. I mean, obviously, what Dime used that that I don't use. I yeah. mean, obviously, was is a, a noise gate. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I mean, obviously, if you're going to be doing and 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 yes. and the da da yeah. I mean, my stuff. I mean, I it's just pure lightning all the time. I mean, <laughs> it, it, if if I'm going to stop, you yeah. stop. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, like otherwise, like if I was doing stillborn, da 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 da. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. I mean, obviously, when we were doing a record, I mean, I'd have I'd step on and off the pedal. Yeah, you know what I mean mm-hmm. in the breaks. But I mean, obviously, if I was going to do it live and you have a noise but live, I just turn the pedal off. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just yeah. I'll just play the, the riff because uh, you know you know what it is. Otherwise, that when you're just wide open like that and you got the pedal on, it's, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just screaming feedback. You know what yeah. I mean? But but you need that. You need the pedal on for that tone. Yeah. So, no, but I mean, with Dime stuff, it's just, you know, Dime, Dime would have like two distortion pedals on at the same time. I yeah. remember in his way, he goes back, what, what, what pedals do you use? And I, like I said, the one of the Berserker, my, you know, my overdrive pedals, he had one of those things in his board. Yes. I was like, I, I, I go, Dime, it's probably not even adding anything, you know what I mean? I go, because <laughs> you got so much overdrive on there. But I mean, for him, there wasn't enough gain, you know, like he loved it. Yeah. So I mean, and you know, and there's an art to cre- to to controlling it. Yeah. You know, I mean, ask any guitar player if they're not used to playing with a distortion pedal on. Any of our buddies that just play without one, mm-hmm. they're like, "Bro, how do you play with that thing?" And I mean, my even with my rig, it's not, to me, it's not even that dirty. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's just like, uh, you no, know, but with dime stuff, you gotta you have to have a noise gate on. Yeah. For sure. Right. So now I'm a proud owner of the noise gate as well. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But are you going to use his amplifiers and stuff? And uh, what? Yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, when, when I get together with the guys, or otherwise, I'll just you know I'll be using my rig. Yeah, sure. So you're sitting and practicing. Is there uh, like a particular song or solo you're uh, particularly worried about? <laughs> like in terms no, of I mean, I, to me, you know, it's just like you know we're learning Randy stuff. Yeah. You know whether we're of learning. Course. Whether we're doing Mr. Crowley or I don't know or anything, I mean, to me, they're just it's 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 fun. Yeah, that's a joy of it. I mean, you know, whether we're playing goddamn electric, I mean, that that solos. Yes. Beyond, I mean, all the solos are blazing. I mean, you know, they're all awesome. But I mean, uh, no, I just approaching it the same way. I have to learn Randy stuff. When yeah. I have to learn Jake stuff or Lord Iomi. You know, when we're playing Sabbath stuff. So yeah, you know, it's just a matter of remembering all the parts. You know, and it's just amazing. Like you know. Now that you're sitting down and working on it, like if we were working on Rush songs or whatever, mm. where you find out all the little trickery going on, yep. and the little the little bits and pieces where you go, oh, wait, hold on a second. That's that's three times there. That's four times over here. You, yep. you know what I mean? And it's just like, oh, wow. They, they didn't do it the same on the second time around. You know what I mean? Yep. So, uh, I mean, because with Black Label, even with Ozzy stuff, I mean, I'd, I'd write that stuff as caveman as possible, bro. Right. Like, if you're going to be playing the riff to NI, NIB, it's da na 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 da na There is no trickery going on. We're not going to start going into different time signatures here and start breaking things down. It's like ACDC. It's like you're going to play in 6-8. It's like, I have no idea what that is, <laughs> but we know 4-4. Four, four. We can play that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, is there any personal favorite song that you look forward to playing? No, I mean, it's just like playing when I'm doing the Zach Sabbath stuff or I'm doing when I'm playing with Ozzy. I, I love all of it. Yeah. They're all fun, you know what I yeah. mean? So, so you know, it's going to be fun when we're, you're playing Walk. Yes, of course. And stuff like that or, you know, uh, Cowboys from Hell or anything like that. But uh, some of the other ones that we got on there, like, uh, you know, I mean, New Level and stuff like that. I mean, those are, those are all cool, too. But, I mean, it's just uh, going through these songs. I mean, I mean obviously, because you... You've heard them, but I mean, like, it was so funny. I remember with Frank Bella when we were out just doing the Anthrax tour. Frank, he's like, well, Zach, you know all these songs. I go, why would I know these songs? <laughs> That's like saying a dime. Dime's going to go do, uh, he's going to fill in for me and in Ozzy. And it's just like, because let's say I, I could do it or whatever. And it's just like, oh, Oz, why don't you have Dime come out and do while while I'm gone for, you know, the, the month or whatever, you yeah. know, to fill in for four three weeks or whatever yeah. and it'd be like well dime you know all these songs you know miracle man you know no more tears yeah. you know mom i've got time would go and why would i know them yeah uh, that, uh, i mean people <laughs> like, yeah, people sort of buddy. expect this from you. i don't know these songs <laughs> yeah no. 
No. Just because you're Dimebag's friend, they sh yeah, you should I be mean, able like to know his songs. To sit, learn them. Yeah, totally, man. I mean, it's just like no different than working on the Sabbath stuff or when I'm doing the Experience Hendrix thing. Right. And, you know, me and you were going to do Manic Depression or something like that. And you're like, oh, is that you? I know Purple Haze or Hey Joe, but it's just like, let's work on Manic Depression. You know, you got to got to sit down and work on it. Well, you know, you, you see all the stuff when you're when you're working on stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think I may have gone on your uh, website. You know, I just on um, the see becoming or whatever. You know what I yeah, mean? Right, right, you right. <laughs> right. Well, that, that's <laughs> yeah. the, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, like yeah, even, even if I any of these things that I got stumped on, I was like, what the hell is that? It was just like I would just go how to play. Yeah. Uh, you know, hostile or whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? And it was just like I go onto YouTube and just see. All these other amazing players yeah. playing this stuff. Oh, that's the and thing. Go, like, oh, okay. you, you, like th that's the thing too. People think that just because I did a cover once and nailed the solo for one take, that I know the stuff. But you know, it's gone like two minutes after you record the stuff. So yeah, no, no, because then you're on to something else. <laughs> yes, exactly. No, I mean for me, that's that's the whole thing too. Playing it with the record, yeah, is one thing. Yeah, but then you take the record oh. away. It's like, all right, play it for me. Yeah, you know, because I mean, playing it with the record is. It's a, you know, because it's it's the guideline. Yeah. You know, it's like color by numbers. You can you know where you're going. Exactly. But I mean, it's just like uh, we're taking the GPS off your car. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, all right, do you remember how to get back down to Hollywood? You're like Zach. I have no idea. I'm following the <laughs> GPS the whole time. You know, it's been fun. I'll be seeing the guys. <clears throat> I guess in uh, next month. Oh. I'll be hooking up with the fellas. So you know, and then we we just start going over everything and just go. Probably light pads, go over it nice and quiet until yeah. we can start. So we start firing it up and just go full volume. That's awesome. That's I'm extremely excited, and I hope you guys bring it to Europe as well. I think I have to come over just to US if you start playing there, just to go watch you. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously we're doing these dates down there, and yeah. whatever else the you know the fellas have planned, mm -hmm. I guess we'll we'll find out. Yeah. The, do, before we end, do you have a good uh, dime story you could share? Well, I remember when we did the Guitar World cover yep. for uh, with me and Dime in the camo with Nick Bocott and yes. stuff like that. I remember it was right around Christmas time. I went down there, went to Dime's house, and then, uh, I mean, the debauchery and then the, the Animal House berserk and comedy just... Uh, it was out of control. I mean, it just pure comedy. But uh, all I remember is I missed my flight. I got they got me to the airport, ended up missing the flight. Then I just went to the bar for a while. Then I just went to a hotel room, and then I remember I just I, I fell asleep or whatever. But all I remember is Barb was not happy about that one because I missed the flight. And she was in New York with the kids at the time, and they had to be two and three years old. So. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't gain any, uh, <laughs> any points on that one. It was, it was, it was rather very ungood, but, uh, cause they couldn't find me either. Cause there was the days before the cell phones. Oh yeah. Okay. So I was in a hotel room somewhere and they were like, where is he? I was like, MIA, bro. God, <laughs> they, they couldn't track me down or nothing. I was in a hotel at a holiday inn somewhere in, in the Fort Worth airport somewhere down there. But, uh, yeah, that was. That was some severe comedy, though, bro. Oh. Yeah, and then, but like Barb was, she could yell at me, but she wouldn't yell at Dime. Yeah, right. That was so that was the saving grace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Dime would go, "Oh, Barb, don't be mad at Zach. You know, you know, it's not Zach's fault. You know." So she couldn't. So Dime, I used him as the buffer for sure. <laughs> Awesome. Dude, thank you so much for taking uh, a short little amount of time with me. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I'm, real looking forward, it, I'm real looking forward to see uh, anything that you will do in the, in the future. You're, you're amazing. Just want to say that. Uh, right back at you, my brother. And uh, great work with the channel, brother. Thank you so keep, much. Keep posting the stuff because I'm, I'm going on there. And you're actually showing uh, me how to, the proper way to do this thing. <laughs> uh, maybe. All right. Dude, <laughs> thank you so much, man. Thank you. Bye, my brother. You take care of yourself. You too, man. See ya. There you go. A short little video. Thank you so much for watching. Sack wild, everyone. Fucking hell. I'm looking forward to these shows so much, man. So much. Have a good one.